Hello, welcome to Lay Back with Betfair Education Series. We're talking about lay betting this episode with the man Shane Churlio. We'll get a bit of his background, but we'll touch on all things lay betting coming up in the next 25 minutes or so. So, Shane, as I welcome you in, how are you, mate? Yeah, really well, Tom. Thanks for having me down. Great to have you here. You're a long-time viewer, big fan of the show. Yeah, um, I think I was one of the first people to comment on your show, episode one. It wasn't one. a nice comment either. No, I was just trying to g you up a bit. <laughs> get you going it's been it's been a dream of yours to come on the show it's great to have you here we're talking all things lay betting firstly i want to touch on a bit about your background um talk to us about how you got into the game how you got into wagering what excited you about it yeah so always sort of involved in racing one way or another as a small shareholder um and just wagering enthusiast as a young fella growing up and playing footy then i moved to toowoomba uh, nine or ten years ago and that's when i started getting into it more full-time discovered that they have about eight or nine jump outs every morning you know, with six or seven horses per jump out that weren't televised and the market didn't know what was going on and was having a few bets off the back of that. Um, and after a little bit of time doing that, I thought I could do this full time. And um, yeah, that was five years ago or so now. Um, and just enjoyed the journey and discovering the pitfalls and everything else that goes with it along the way. Now, there's been a lot of challenges in that five years. We'll touch on that potentially later in the program as well, talking about finding your edge you found an edge there and times change in the last five years we've got all sorts of things happening in the industry as well which we might touch on but um you're a big big advocate for betfair you're you use it regularly we're talking about lay betting here but what's your main reasoning why you use betfair um yeah well, i mean lay betting is one part of it uh in play betting is another part of which it we'll touch it's, on in the next episode it, like it's just, good. it's just the complete tool um using it for uh information as well because there's some good market intelligence that um you can follow by using betfair and using betfair life so yeah it's just a complete tool for me I, I couldn't sort of operate without it let's talk about lay betting what is lay betting we'll have a look at this video mastering lay betting on the betfair exchange you'll find more ways to bet if you think something will win back it but what if you think something won't win on the exchange you can lay it laying is betting that something won't win with laying you act like a bookmaker and bet against punters who are backing something to win just click lay Enter the profit you want to make and the exchange will let you know your risk. Not happy with the odds you see? You can set your own odds and wait to be matched. When you think something won't win, then lay. Lay betting only on the exchange. We've had a look at that video. It explains in, in a short format why people lay or how to lay as well. It's a, it's a really good video. Head to YouTube for all sorts of information, the Betfair Hub as well. Um, Obviously, Shane, lay betting is a good tool. We touched on that, and there's so many reasons why we lay horses, whether it be the markets, the odds, uh, form, ratings, track form, jockey bookings, ground, trainer records, weights, distances. <laughs> there's um, a million things, yeah. Headgear. Um, odds is the big one. Um, sure. and, and you definitely frame your own markets. Is that your starting point for each race? Yeah, so I frame my own markets, um, and there's a fair bit that goes into that, and um, obviously the data uh, but then we have things like speed map and we have a little bit of market that we um that we apply to as well so talk to us about the data because obviously you started in toowoomba going to the tracks you probably didn't do much data back then it was all eye and and yeah. finding an edge that way obviously in the last five years you've pivoted a little bit and you've educated yourself a bit more on on data and stuff like that how does that help and how does that help you frame markets yeah it's, um it's certainly reinvented and i had to reinvent because you know your edges are always eroding and when you first start out betting you've got um access to so more sort of corporate accounts i suppose bookmaking accounts yep. um and as we know when you start having a little bit of success and that's not necessarily just winning that's also just beating the market um that you get restricted there pretty quickly um so that sort of changed and um i was always like you say team believe your eye um and then uh, sort of got introduced to data and then I was able to sort of quantify some of those performances where it looked like it might have been a good run and then I could quantify that by looking at the data um, to see if that backed up uh, what your eyes saw. We spoke to Terry um, as well, Terry Layton, about that and he's a big believer of his eye as well. That's how he started. He found an edge that way. Um, there's so much that goes into it. But let's have a look at an example of a race at Ipswich on June 19 it was. Now, I want, to, I want you to talk us through this. Now, this was a race at Ipswich, big day at Ipswich. Now, you framed your own market. We'll get the market up here. Now, this is your market to 100%. So you've got um, number two accessory at $5. Read my future, you've marked at $2.05. Is that, that's a market to 100%? It is, your yeah. Markets? Yeah, yep. it is, yeah. So the, the good thing about Betfair um, as well is the markets generally are, are framed at 101% 
to, to start time on race meetings as well. So read my future. You've got marked at $2.05, a 17.5% edge there. Um, do you remember why you, you rated that horse favourite and why it was so short? Uh, yeah. Um, so these horses were stepping up at 2,400 metres, um, most of them for the first time. Um, and it was a fi- heat and final series race. So a lot of these horses had come through similar sort of races. So you're able to get a good line through, you know, benchmarking performances out of those races. Yep. So I was looking for horses that were going to be strong at the end of 2400, as opposed to those horses, you know, that have just come out of those 2000 meter races and were stepping up. Um, so accessory and read my future got, you know, big ticks for that because they were the two horses that stood out at the trip, uh, as well as the speed map, um, uh, influencing those prices as well, where they both were going to get very good runs in transit. Well, as you can see, um, Shane's market's got Kipling's Journey, the 10 horse, um, at 14.9% um, under the odds. Mm. Um, so it's a negative edge. So we'll talk, we'll bring the speed map up in a second, but 14.9%, that's a big um, unders or underlay. Um, you looking to lay that horse, and we'll talk about why in a second. Yeah, I'm trying to keep the grin off my face. This was a fill-up, this race, actually. <laughs> That's why you gave it to use yeah. as an example, mate. We're all over your games. Um, yeah, I mean, Kipling's Journey was one of those horses, for example, that was, um, you know, won a heat of this race over 2,000 metres, and um, there was nothing in the data that suggested that it was strong at the end of 2,000. It was more that the competition was no good. And I think it came up pre-post favourite, um, you know, around that sort of four dollar mark or three eighty or something. And so. you've and you looking at your market, you've marked at nine dollars eighty six. So yeah, um, obviously uh, you rated it a much lesser chance than the market. Absolutely. So a good opportunity to lay. We'll bring the speed map up, and I'm guessing this is a big reason why you why you were laying it because as you look as you see this market here, Kipling's Journey, you've got back and wide. Is that how you read it? Yeah. So gate ten and the horse didn't have a lot of speed and. Um, Everything that's, or the only horse that was drawn outside of it was a go forward horse. So everything that was drawn inside of Kipling's journey was going to fall into the running line and onto the rail, which means he'd have no choice but to sit three wide, no cover, or go back to last. And Ipswich isn't a track that you can do that. No, it's a reasonably tight turning track. Um, you're sort of on a corner from about the 700 all the way around to the 250, basically. So it's, um, it's, and obviously it's the same with similar circumference around the back straight and the back corner out of the straight. So being a 2400 metre race. And being trapped wide and having to go all the way back to last was, um, you know, it's a massive negative. And that's great intel. So you're looking at a key negative there in terms of map, but also data and ratings. And, and you've rated it close to $10 and it's opened half that, which is quite amazing. So you're looking to lay it. Now, you're expecting this horse to drift based on all these factors mm-hmm. as soon as markets open. So your first play on a market like this is to, to lay a horse if you're expecting it to drift. And that's what you did on this occasion? Yeah, so this one, um, yeah, for sure. So I expected this to get out. Um, so I was happy to chip away at the lower odds, um, you know, early out. So, you know, there's, a, there's not a great deal of money in the market, like, you know, in fairness, so like early on, yep. you know, like before race one, you know, this is race four, I think, on the day. So I'm just looking at that market and just chipping away and, and laying anything that's, you know, around that sort of $5 mark or less. It's um, an interesting point as well, because you don't want to put up a big price on the exchange no. early and give your edge away yeah. and notify people that you're keen to lay it. So a lot of the activity happens late because of that reason as well. Absolutely. Um, and you can, I mean, obviously you can, you know, get programs, third party programs with yep. Betfair that overlay as well that can help you do that. Um, and you can just trickle some money into the market. But on this occasion, I was just manually betting it um, and just taking whatever money was put up around that five dollar quote. Do you use um, third party apps? You've got Grass, Bet Angel, a few yeah, others. I would use Bet Angel. Bet Angel, yeah, yeah. yeah. So we'll talk about that as well, especially in the in play um, betting episode later on. And we'll talk a bit about third party apps, which are a great tool as well. So yeah, for sure. we'll touch on that. But um, let's have a look at your first place. So we'll just use a, an arbitrary stake here of $120. You, you're looking to lay Kipling's journey at that six dollar mark. So that gives you a liability of $600. That's your first bet, but yep. you're keen. Obviously, you've got read my future rated two dollars oh five. So you've yep. got another bet here. You can see three dollars eighty five on the Betfair exchange as we bring that graphic up. If you were to have one hundred and twenty on that to produce your liability of, of six hundred or, or whatnot, and then you have that hundred dollar bet on read my future, is that how you did it on the day? Yeah, it was. So talk um, to us a bit about that. Yeah, so on the day, I'm, I've, I've framed these markets after scratchings. Um, and using a little bit of like fixed price stuff that goes into our algorithm as well for our pricing. So I'm having a fixed odds bet anyway. Uh, and like I've taken a horrible price compared to Betfair here. Like I'm, I've taken like 320, 310 after yep. scratchings because I've rated it $2. Like, and you, you just jump yeah, on that because it's naturally... a bit up thinking that you know, the market's going to follow me here. I've got this pretty right. The data's pretty clear. 
I think the market will follow. Yeah. Uh, and that's why I wanted to lay that horse as early as I could for as what I, whatever I could get out of it because I thought it would drift. But so, yeah, so if we just look at those odds there that are available and you can see Read My Futures actually drifted as well from, you know, from the seven or eight o'clock price. Talk um, to us talk to us a bit about this as well. We'll go off tangent a little bit here, but we're, the market's not doing quite as expected from mm, your perspective. Mm. Do you back yourself in? Do you, have to. Uh, you back yourself you have in? have to, yeah. yeah. Because now... There's sort of there's certain races, and I, I can't really go too deep into it. We need like f- four hours a whole season. Yeah, um, <laughs> we might but, get you back, mate. But there's uh, there's certain trainer jockeys and setups where you could be a little bit suspect of the market. You know, if this horse was resuming or it was first up, first starter, and you know, there's there's uh, there's different setups where they, where a drift could be um, a, a concern. This race in particular, this is a heat and final series. It's a hundred thousand dollar to the winner race. For stayers in Queensland, like it's it's great prize money. No one's going to give their horse, you know, going or, into the going yeah. into the race to give their horse a fitness run. Yeah, like they're all going to be you know trying their hardest here. So that's a big key, and I to especially when you were doing it early, probably is backing yourself and watching your eye, but working out the intent of trainers and stuff like yeah. that as well. Yeah, it's a massive piece of the puzzle. You can grow yourself up doing it, and you can put too much emphasis on it. Um, but there's certain you know, criteria, and, and mainly it's mainly around first up, all those horses that are either on debut or first up, where the market does sort of have a bit more of an impact, maybe yeah. mentally than anything. And parade as well. How and parade. parade's a big thing, but you know, obviously, um, you know, with the areas that I operate, um, you know, they're country Queensland horses that, that I look at in the yard. So, it's, <laughs> so, so describe what you're looking at when you're looking <laughs> yeah. at country Queensland horses. Right? Um, you're just looking for the. Uh, they're very similar, I suppose, but um, <laughs> you're just looking for the ones that are that are that are okay on the day, and you're more penalising the ones that are horrible more yes. so than giving a tick to the ones that look good. There's no Lon Rose walking around. Not many no. that I can remember. We had, yeah, yeah. Incentivise, who won this race that we're speaking about. Did he stand out? Yeah, he just stood out and he in stood the out. I done my complete plums on the horse in a oh. Toowoomba maiden over a mile. Oh, I remember when that. I got beat at oh, even money. That's funny. And it wins the Caulfield Cup. <laughs> It is amazing, isn't it? The I'll great game. So let's let's talk about this. So you've you've had more to lay on Kipling's journey than you have to stake. Read my future. That that actually gives you an edge on all other runners. So you've got every other runner for a small profit. Yep. So in this instance, in this example, we've got one hundred and twenty dollars on the lay side with Kipling's journey, yep. and you've actually backed a hundred dollars of that profit if Kipling's journey didn't win on read my future. So that gives yep. you a profit of $20 on all other runners. Correct. Yeah. But Kipling's journey, you've got a big liability and we'll touch on what liability is in a second. And then read my future wins. You've got a big profit. Yeah. So that's how you've done it. Um, hopefully the examples on the screen show a bit about that, but talk to us about what liability is. Yeah. I mean, obviously it's just how much you want to lose on the, on that runner winning. Yeah. Um, basically now there's, um, there's plenty of different, skills of thought there's guys that do it completely different i just do it to whatever's um to whatever's comfortable really like it's not really a mathematical equation for me as a percentage of bank on this side of it and this race is a great example of why i do that because like i feel like that i've got an edge um in you know in these races in queensland and i've just got to back myself and bet to it yeah um you know there's a lot more smarter guys than me when it comes to data and analysis and that sort of thing and there's a lot better guys than me when it comes to working out staking and as you know size of the bank and all that sort of stuff but um there's a little bit of you know there's there's a tiny bit of like you know not necessarily gut feel but intuition and and you know confidence in in what i'm doing to to work that out so i mean that that liability there that we're looking at on that example before i mean that's you know that what's the total outlay total liability for for that race on that example was seven hundred dollars yeah you know and like you could go and have seven hundred on read my future and it gets and it runs second now as it turned out it just got there in the end but if you were just backing if you were betting if you just use a normal normal bookmaker and you just you hated the favorite so you wanted to back the second favorite and then the third favorite knocks you off and you and get you nothing feel, out of the race yeah it's just silly and that's why you've got to use betfair for that ex, for that example and there's plenty of people out there that bet around favorites um and this is the platform to use it and that example there is exactly why there's nothing worse than being hard against a horse and it not running well Mm. And being well beaten, and you don't make profit on the mate, on the race. Yeah, and like, well, profit's what it's about, right? So, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So, I mean, this race worked out well. There's plenty of other examples um, of favourites getting beaten. I'm sure everyone that's watching, um, you know, would have a like a memory, a recent memory of a horse that they hated that got beaten. They got nothing out of the race, and it makes you a little bit sick um, that's right. when that happens. So, so liability is obviously what you're 
ca- what you will lose, yep. what you're liable for if that horse you're laying wins, and the stake is actually the profit on all other runners. Yep. So just to clear that up, um, let's talk a bit about hedging and other reasons why you would lay. So there's obviously a few reasons why you could lay. You might be alive in the last of your quaddy. You might be um, alive in a multi. Um, or you might just trade and, and want, we'll talk about trading in another episode coming up as well. But do you do much hedging? Oh, uh, a little bit. Not, not heaps. You're a confident guy. Not so heaps. you back yourself mainly. Yeah, um, basically. <laughs> um, but I think you have to have a little bit of ego, a little bit of um, you know, self-confidence. Or else how would you survive? Like if you let the market influence everything that you do, all you're going to do is continue to follow the market. It's, it's like a reason why that, you know, you'll hear, you know, uh, certain broadcasters say oh there's this thing sixes into threes and then everyone's piling in at three dollars and yeah like you're taking unders yeah um that's a really good point because there is a snowball effect both Absolutely. back and lay a lot of people do follow money and we see the the different things that bookmakers do to highlight the firm is they just continue to firm and they end up majority of the time those big firmers start under the odds yeah for sure so knowing what the market does and and how to read markets and why things are potentially Laying, uh, drifting is a, is a big yeah, one for sure um and just with the hedging thing like it's um you know i, I use a you know three betfair have done some automation um so i might be backing a horse at 350 there was one as an example at doom and yesterday a horse that we took 270 about um that was about an even money chance on our on our data uh it started a dollar 85 doesn't like, sound like queensland mate no <laughs> um but then if you if you're automating uh a lay bet you, you you could have backed that horse fixed odds, and yes. then you, and then you've laid it because it's a dollar eighty five, and you've it's, and you've marked it evens. It's fascinating, especially when you frame your own markets. That's a fascinating nuance of betting and the exchange. Like mm. you've you've got it as a bet at a certain price, and it starts under the odds, and you're actually laying a horse that you liked originally, yeah. which is fascinating. It does, does happen. Do you often fight, if you took two seventy? Do you lay if you if you've got a good bet on it two seventy? Do you lay a hedge, or are you just happy with the, the odds? No, nah, I'm just happy with the odds mainly, and then. If it gets beat, you just get on Twitter and blame the overs god, basically, <laughs> is how it works. There's a lot of people, and it's it's the beauty of what I do and, and my job at Betfair is dealing with clients that have different ways to make money. They all have edges. Some people will take 270 about a horse on Betfair and lay off at 260 and make a small profit either way. Perfect, yeah. Like, and it's they do that race day in, day out, every race or whatever it might be. Some people might lay horses in run. We'll talk about in run in a minute as well. Um, some people will trade, whatever it might be. And you can do that on sports as well. Yeah, like for sure. We'll touch on golf betting golf as well. Um, big movers in, in a lot of these markets. So the beauty of Betfair, it's like a stock market. You you back high, lay low, essentially. Yeah, it's um, look, there's so many corporate bookmakers out there and like um, you know small guys that you can start an account with. And it's just, it, you just have to run Betfair alongside that. There's, there's so many opportunities um, that I wouldn't say it's hard work. It's just got to be consistent at it. Um, is the key and you can like you say backing and laying is um, a simple way to make to make small money to make small margin yep um, on decent turnover and I wouldn't say risk free but you know you, you, you're, you're using Betfair to mitigate the risk absolutely 100% and then there's there's guys out there and you see it all the time whinging about being alive the last leg of the quaddy or losing or yeah. being set for huge money in the last leg of a multi and they've got something at a dollar eighty going for tens of thousands of dollars or whatever and it gets beaten it's a simple simple equation to open a betfair account bet or lay off and hedge on that favorite back it to lay or lay it mm. and make money either way well there's i mean obviously there's um you know these multis are becoming a popular fixed odds bet type yep um uh same game or you know this yeah no, it's it's not it's too easy to back one winner time you've got to have <laughs> you've got to try and back three or four in the same bet type uh there's so many last leg Bad beat stories. Correct. So many of them. Um, just like just get a Betfair account and just lay off for a double your stake or something. At least get lunch out of it. So you don't it lose. Beat, you know? Yeah, it's it's perfect. So I agree. Um, anything else to add about lay betting or do you do, you do much in play? We'll touch a bit about that, but do you do yeah. a little bit? We'll lead into our next episode. But Yeah, I do do a little bit of in play stuff and um, it's a pretty competitive game. Um, but if you go in there prepared with um, horses... That, for, with speed maps particularly is what I do. So um, I'm looking, I'm doing a speed map and then I'm looking to um, to bet. When, if I Sometimes you want to get a horse to land in a spot 
like you're, you're yes, hoping it yep. gets there, but you're not quite sure. So yep. you don't want to bet pre-off. Yes. And then yep. in run, if you see it land in the spot where you wanted it to be, yeah, you can tap away. Tap away. So that might include a leader drawn wide, and if it jumps well and finds the front, you can back yeah. it. But um, if you're on that horse as well and it does find the spot, and you've taken the two eighty, three dollars, whatever it might be, early, yeah, and it finds that spot, and suddenly it comes in a dollar forty. It's a simple lay as well. Yeah, look, and I do that a little bit as well. Like you know, I don't. So I'm, if I, I do the data for every race, um, and I'm betting to most races where there's an edge, and then uh, then there's other races where okay, I don't have a clear edge based on this because the map's unclear or whatever else. But I've got two or three horses highlighted. Um, I'll throw in a couple of bets at certain prices if they get to a to a point. So watch the race and they've landed where I think it, I wasn't sure it would get there, but it would. So I'll put a bet in to bet fair in run. And if it gets matched, it gets matched sort of thing. There's other races where I thought, gee, if this, this is like 20s, this will definitely lead. I'm going to have something on this at 20s. And then I'm going to put a, 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 lay bet, a lay bet in at like you know eight or nine dollars um, in run to get matched to chop out my stake. Looking yeah. forward to touching on that in a bit of detail in the next episode. We talk about in play betting and trading. Shane, it's been an absolute pleasure. I could talk to you for hours about the great game. Head over to Betfair Hub www.betfair.com.au forward slash hub. All our info, all our videos that we're doing will be on there. Plenty of in- educational content as well. If you don't have the new app, download uh, the new Betfair Australia app. Shane, been a pleasure, mate. Well, great. Thanks for having me, Tom. Bet with care. Gamble responsibly. Call 1-800-858-858.